My name is Mark Blackman. You know, I like to think we all do a lot of different things and like fulfill a lot of roles. And said it's you know a community of people, but also a community of, of just getting the job done. But officially, um, I suppose my titles would be writer, actor, director, producer, in no particular order. Yeah. I first started writing the story or just writing like ideas and stuff. Got it in my head to like, oh, this would be funny to, to write. Um, and we started working on music. And then a few months later, we had this big list of all the songs and everything that sort of had to be done or, or in the order of, of the show or whatever. And I was going through it with Steph. And I was like, yeah, I'm looking for a director. I was trying to find a director because I didn't know shit about making movies, you know, how to like do what with a camera, this or that. Um, I was going through with Steph. I was like, yeah, I just can't seem to find anybody. I had this friend and he wasn't trying to do it. And Steph was like, no, 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 fuck that. We can just do it ourselves. Um, so I said, okay. We started doing that. Then Dan, we were like, well, we need a storyboard. And we couldn't draw, so we got Dan, who was like, all right, I've been waiting for this for a year. That's about time. Um, yeah, and we started there, and by the end of, by the end of May that year, we had a little team, it was the four of us, and Roy was on board, and Sarah was on board, and yeah, I mean, that's the job, I mean, that's what I was thinking, like, well, you know, I'm all right, but, you know, that person is great, and that person is great, and that person is great, and you put them all together, and that, uh, and, you know, you can make, if you grab the right people, you can do anything. Oh, well, it doesn't even matter what the job is. Like, yeah, these people could probably do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really fantastic how that worked out. I mean, you know, we had no idea, or I had no idea exactly, like, how much everyone was going to help us and just be trying to get involved. But, you know, from the get-go, the concept was this place is different from everywhere else, and and... You know, this needs to exist not because it's just a, a thing, not because, oh, it's a musical. Like, yeah, a musical, that's a great movie, you know, concept that nobody's doing. But it was the, you know, the, the neighborhood is the inspiration. It was, a, you know, designed or destined or whatever to be about here and take place here. So it only maybe makes sense that everybody would be jumping in there. I don't know. So music. Music is tricky because... Well, two things. One, you know, I feel like creatively you need to do more with it. You know, you're leaving reality a little bit, singing the songs. You can't just do one shot with the camera looking at it. I mean, you can, but then it might as well be on a stage. It's a movie. You've got to take advantage of that by doing things you can't do. So it makes just the shots themselves a little bit more challenging because the concept is like, oh, well, they have to be moving, so we have to be rolling in a wheelchair or putting it on a dolly or handheld or, or something. Um, so each shot was a little bit harder, but also you need to, you know, sync up with the music that you've already recorded, um, and make sure you get that right. Um, and people need to, you know, be prepared to be ridiculous when you're out filming in the actual, you know, real place in the street, you know, acting like you're singing a song, you need to dance around and sing a song. Um, so that's tricky if you're not. It's challenging working on the streets because of course you have very little control over the environment. People are living and doing their thing and you can't stop them from it, nor do you want to, but I personally love that. That's one of my favorite challenges. Um, yeah, you're in it with them and with the people and that's, and that was, you know, what we said is, well, we're not going to try to like put up signs and like stay off the set and really get in people's way. We want, just like they are, you know, been kind to let us do our thing, we want everybody to do their thing. We don't want to be in anybody's way. Like, you live your life, walk by, do this, do that. Um, you know, just don't look at the camera. <laughs> and they were, everybody was pretty on board with that. You know, it's funny, it, it makes it, it's tricky, you know, you lose a lot of takes because somebody walks through or does something weird. But it also creates a, a, an, an awesome element of unpredictability, which uh, creates an environment to, to capture things on camera that you, you couldn't even think of because they're just there, especially when you're trying to portray the actual place where you are, you're capturing things that just are there and, and are really there. That's like the real thing that you're trying to fake right in it. It's like you're not, I mean, don't fake it, it's just there.
any uh, juicy anecdote or best day on the set or worst day on the set? <laughs> I don't know. In some ways I loved them all, in some ways I hated them all. <laughs> no, I mean, they, you know, uh, fuck shit was a lot of fun. Everybody running all about in the middle of the street. I felt good. That was a, a neat day because it was right after. So the day we were shooting It's Okay to Fuck, um, on, on like Saturday the 9th or something, um, there was this big old mess of a thing because I like asked DP Bob to like DP for that shoot because he like had good ideas and this and that and like it got miscommunicated poorly and Steph was upset and this and that and the crew was like pissed off and they stormed out of the set that day and fuck shit was the next day and it was like post everyone resolving their problems at the end of the day before and like there was this great energy of like everybody just wanting to like start things over from there and, and go at it and it was a you know, neat day for that to be happening because it was the day, the first day we had like 50 people on the set, 60 people, however many we had, breaking them all up to run and, and riot in the middle of the street. Yeah, riot seems fun, party seems fun, but really stressful. Um, moving to Harlem and Columbus Circle was a lot of fun, but I rarely get to enjoy it as much as I f would like or feel like I should. I just have to think all the time. In a lot of ways, having all the jobs that I feel like I had was too much. Like, it was definitely more than I could, you know, I want to say anyone could, could really get all of everything done, but maybe not, but more than I could actually complete. So, you know, what ends up happening, or, or the skill that I try to, you know, hone is the ability to get things done. And maybe it's right, maybe it's not, but the ability, or maybe it's a good strategy, maybe it's not, but the ability to to accomplish things without a lot of plan, to figure things out as you go on the spot. Um, and that's something that I applied to everything. You know, it's, you know, there's enough time to do the things, but what you don't have enough time for is to prepare for all the things you need to do the day of. You know, if I need to like have the full shot list and plan out all the shots and be rehearsing my scenes and know my lines and know what I'm going to do. So what happens is things get lost and you make it up on the spot. Like, I haven't rehearsed that scene that well or I haven't taken the time that I was supposed to to think of how I was going to go about doing it, I just you just have to jump in and do it anyway, and just do it. Um, and that's yeah, I mean that's the only solution I can find to that is you just have to not be afraid and then just go regardless, and something will come out. That's the other great thing that 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 I really like about you know filling these roles as as a writer and director in particular and actor is that so much can be flexible because I can make a decision on the spot and it's really hard if you didn't write it or if you're not in it or, or, or whatever it is, you know, if I'm to, to understand all the different things that are going on or, or maybe it's really hard, I don't know, I, this is the only experience I ever have with this, but to understand, you know, why this was written and how that's going to affect this shot and, and what you need to do on the camera and when I can do all those myself, um, you know, I can change things quickly and easily and understand how that works. Um, and if it will or won't work. Not everybody loves that when I change things a lot. Most of them don't, but that's a solution. Other anecdotes? Is that, is that, if you had something. Yeah, there were other funny little, I mean, moments. Shooting the sex scene with the topless girl, that was really funny. When we were shooting the part of the beginning of Fuck Shit where everybody's, you know, you're an artist in Harlem, you're a student in Harlem, public health care professional in Harlem, shit's fucked! Because we were just the four of us standing in the stoop in the middle of the afternoon you know, getting that shot from like four different angles and we just ran a series on all of them. So basically for ten minutes we're standing in the stoop yelling, Shit's fucked! Shit's fucked! Real loud and people stop and walk and walk. <laughs> you definitely want that thing to be ready as soon as possible. Hell yeah. We want to get it done quick and we want to tell everybody and their mother about it. Um, we're going to need some money for that, but shirts. I'd like to get a thousand shirts. Give them to everybody in the neighborhood. Like to, yeah, you know, as soon as we have something edited, we'll start making trailers and just burst them out. I mean, I don't see any reason why we can't have, unless it just takes a long time to make, but, you know, 10 different trailers to just keep putting out there like every other week. Oh, here's something new, here's something new, here's something new. Song clips. Get a little buzz going on. Yeah. Um, and then, September, right, so here's the plan. So September and October, we're going to, um, try to rally everybody up and, and do a big like two month I, I, I don't 
like the term guerrilla, but maybe like a guerrilla to marketing kind of campaign where I want to do something big. So we're working on it all week and getting things organized. And every weekend we do some big thing, like try to get together 100 people or 200 or however many we can get for that weekend and go do a big thing during the day like flyer every lamppost in New York. And, you know, it takes a plan. You have to maybe map out who's going to go where and how to get it done. Or we're going to do a big thing in Central Park or we're going to do, you know, we're going to helium balloon fly a kid or something, having to welcome the Harlem sign, you know, shit like that, some crazy thing, and then take everybody and have a big party at night and, like, go to different bars and, and try to blow it up that way. The, the thought process is if we can get everybody in New York to hear about it, then that'll carry everywhere. You know, people in New York hear about it, people in New York go see it, everybody's going to hear about it, everybody's going to go see it. Um, so, you know, to do that, since we're here, we're in the middle of the city, like, let's just try to reach out to as many people face to face as we can. It's worth not being afraid of things. Um, yeah, Harlem baby. You know, shooting is, yeah, 36 days, but in a lot of ways, to me, the shooting just blends right in with the last six months of nonstop. I don't even know what the fuck day or what or who started when, why, 36, why time, what does that number even mean? <laughs> All right, <laughs> well, that's good, Mark. You can go to bed now for a couple of days if you, <laughs> if you want to do that. All right, well, cheers, Mark. Thanks, Francois. You're the man.